Hey, and welcome to Corsolino Barpentry. So in today's video, I'm going to be installing a Whirlpool um, over the range microwave with the vent and all that stuff. So um, this is the WMH31017HZ. It is the smudge proof stainless steel to match the other appliances, the fridge, the stove, and the dishwasher. So, I'm gonna unbox this thing, see what I got, figure out what tools I need, grab all those, and then uh, install it. And you'll see I've already got the vent going up into the um, ceiling and out the wall. We did that when we did the renovations and stubbed it out, so that should be good to go. I'll obviously have to cut some holes and drill some holes and stuff to attach it, but uh, we'll get to that in a minute. I just want to be really careful not to scratch this. I don't know where the front is or anything. Okay, so right here it says, do not scrap or trash installation template. So I'm assuming this must be an installation template. It's got a couple holes drilled in it, maybe. And it's perforated here. Here on top we've got hardware bag, the uh, one-way vent, the cords tucked up in here. Er, how do you get this out? Oh, look at that little puzzle piece. Cute. The tray for inside. Instructions, filter. And then the little spinny rack for inside. And this looks like the mounting bracket. Do not discard bracket for proper installation. So this normally gets mounted on the wall in the back. If I'm correct, this gets mounted like that. And then this will click into the microwave somehow. Oh. All right, so... Ah, so this is the face. Oh, I would not have guessed that. Oh, that's a beauty. So we've got the upper cabinet template. So you can see the picture here. You just flip this up on the bottom of the cabinet. And uh, it tells you exactly where to drill everything. Um, where to cut everything out. There's a hole there and a hole there. So what I'll do is um, I will just measure all these things there's measurements for everything so like you find the center and you go six and a quarter let's see here five and three quarters to the face and then you come back from the face four and three quarter not to the face but to the face of this opening um, and then you come out 10 inches here to the holes there 10 inches and then off the center you got to be seven and a half twelve and a half and it goes, you know, you flip it up like that. So this is in the back. This is the face. Pretty straightforward. Let's see here. User guide. All right, that's a weird booklet. Installation instructions, that's what I want. Okie dokie. Here we go, tools needed. Measuring tape, pencil, masking tape or thumbtacks, scissors, number two Phillips screwdriver, number three Phillips screwdriver, drill, three sixteenths or five millimeter, three eighths or 10 millimeter, five eighths or 16 millimeter drill bits. A three quarter inch hole saw, Diagonal wire cutting pliers, stud finder, 7 sixteenths or 11 11 millimeter socket, wrench or box wrench for the one quarter by two inch lag screws, uh, inch and a half 
or 3.8 centimeter diameter hole drill bit for wood or metal cabinet. Keyhole saw. Caulking gun and weather... Just so you know, a keyhole saw. Let me go back to that. Keyhole saw. A keyhole saw is a, a hand little jabber saw that I call it a jab saw sometimes for cutting holes in drywall. Uh, caulking gun and weatherproof caulking compound duct tape so they probably some of these tools um like the caulking gun and the waterproof caulking compound i'm assuming is for outside for installing the the vent and then it shows all the parts that come with it here it talks about wall venting and roof venting um you can do either one i guess we're doing wall venting in this scenario it's like i said it's already in the wall our outlet is already up there three prong grounded outlet Remove the mounting plate. All right, so this says remove anything from the inside, which I did already. So the mounting plate is, I think, this piece we got right here. And then the next thing we got to do is rotate the blower motor. Right now it's set up for recirculating in the room, and we're doing wall venting. So I'm just going to follow these steps here. Um, remove the screws and get this thing all pulled out here. But uh, before I do that, let me go back here. So let me go get all these tools that we need. All right, so I believe I've got everything here. I've got my drill, my impact driver, stud finder. Um, it said a screwdriver, but I usually normally just use my drill for this stuff. Um, a number two and a number three, but I have this just in case. It will, it'll take a number three right in there. Uh, some tape, tape measure, pencil, wire end cutters, scissors. And then all the different drill bits that it recommended. I didn't have an inch and a half. I, the biggest I had was an inch and a quarter, but it looked it's for the uh, extension cord. Looks like it's going to be big enough. So I'm going to try it with this. If I have to widen it, um, I will deal with that when I get there. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move that microwave on top of the pad that it came wrapped in. Flip the blower. So I'm just going to follow these instructions. And uh, looks pretty simple. So remove the two screws and the recessed holes are right there. So I'm going to use, I tried to use the drill. It didn't fit in this hole, but this has a magnetic tip on the screwdriver. And also remove these screws on the top. The plate off. So right now the blower is shooting out. So it's recirculating out the face. And if it was going to be going out the back wall, it would be shot out there. But we are having it shoot up. So we want it to spin this way. So that the vents are on the back side of this hole. You see the picture here. Okay, so it says to re-screw this into the new holes. Seems pretty solid. All right, so we are gonna use this. It says to use the diagonal cutters to remove this thing, to remove these two cutouts here. So to do that, according to the picture, stick the diagonal cutter in that little hole. Those last two you can just bend back and forth and it'll snap right off. Now I'm just going to reattach that. This thing's kind of sticking out, so I'll just tuck it in there. Make sure it's not touching anything that it shouldn't touch. Put the screws back in. So now we have to attach this bracket here. Alright, so I can already see where my studs are, but this is how you find a stud. You go from the edge and until the light comes on and make a mark. And these things are generally not crazy accurate. See how it's changed on this side? I have it on deep scan too. I'll change it. Stud scan. Okay, 
right there. So right in the middle of that should be the center. All right, so the directions say to find the center line, which should be a 30 inch opening. So 15 inches should be the center. I'm gonna check it both directions just to make sure it's good. It's a little heavy. Bring that line back a little bit. 15 a little heavy, 15 a little heavy. And that microwave comes down 17 and a quarter to the bottom. So I'm going to go like 16 here and I'm just going to make a mark in the center. Same thing, 15. All right, there we go. So there's my mark. And that's going to be where the center, because this bracket's like that, so you can see the arrow here is the center. That'll line up there. We just gotta figure out what the height is. We gotta mount that at. So that template that's in here is what it says to use next, which I think is a little ridiculous. It's got these holes here, the bottom corners. So I guess you're supposed to center it and then draw the holes. Mark those holes and then it's just to draw a line across the bottom. It seems very not precise. I'm not loving that. Oh, now it says to check the markings with a tape measure. So I could have just done that with a tape measure. So 17 and 5 sixteenths is where it's supposed to be. 17 and 5 sixteenths. It's right on the money, actually. Eh, this one's a little off. All right, 17 5 sixteenths. And then from the center line, 14 and 1 eighth out. 14 and 1 eighth. That's pretty good. 14 and 1 eighth. That's pretty good actually. Alright. And then I guess that lines up with those holes. See, I don't know if you can see those holes line up with those marks we made. And the bottom of the bracket lines up with the pencil line. It's fairly close. So now what I want to do is I'm just going to carry these center lines down so they're going to hit my bracket. So three and a quarter and 19 and five eighths. And you might be saying, oh, it's not exactly 16 on center. It's close. The, the wall that's in here is an old, this house is 1870, so nothing is exact. Um, so it's, I'm sure it's right on. Um, what I can do quickly is double check and make sure. Yeah, we're good. I'm going to be drilling holes over the stove, so I want to put a drop cloth on it. I don't want to get any dust or damage on it. I don't want to get any damage on it. Get it all nice and covered here. Tuck that in there so keep the dust from going in the back, I guess. Good. All right. Okay, so we're gonna line this up here. So I can see my studs are a little bit off. They don't happen to land where I like them. Looks like that one will just catch. So what I gotta do is I'll I'll screw it in on an angle so it hits that stud, and then same thing here. This one will catch definitely but I'm gonna screw it on an angle the other direction so it, um, you can see the stud, the center of the studs there and there, so we're gonna shoot those in a little bit. So where these end ones go, um, if there's no stud there, it says you have to use these toggle bolts and it does not actually say in the directions how to do this. Uh, it says how to do this part, which is pretty simple. But then um, it doesn't really explain how to how to drill the hole and push this thing in. So it does not tell you what size drill bit to use for this. So what you have to do is close the thing 
and then measure. And this says, uh, I'm going to need like a 5 8 drill bit. Now, in the list of tools, a 5 8 bit was on it, so I'm going to use a spade bit. So I got that drilled out. Now these are ready to go. And to push these in, you just collapse them and stick them in the hole. And then you pull them back to the drywall and you can tighten them. I'm going to use a drill to do that. I'm not going to get them too tight yet because we got to get this thing in place. Now again, it doesn't tell you what drill bit to use to do this. These instructions, as many words as there are, they're very not good at explaining things. Um, so, how you figure out what size drill bit you need is you hold the drill bit up and you want the drill bit to be the same size as the shank so that you're just drilling for the shank but then the threads will bite into the wood. So it did mention using a 3 16 drill bit and that does look correct. I don't know if you can see that though. So I don't know if you can really tell, but that's how you check. Zoom in there. So you gotta cover the shank and have the teeth still exposed. Can you see that? So what I wanna do is grab a level, get this thing where I want it to go, make sure my bolts are in a good spot here. Go back on my line on the bottom. Make sure I'm centered. Looks pretty good there. And I'm just going to throw a level on it to make sure that it's actually level. I'm still on my line. Tighten this down. Tighten this down. Okay, so that should be good there. Now I'm going to drill in for the studs. Remember I said I'm going to go on an angle so I hit that stud. And then uh, I've got these long lag bolts here. So now I've got to mark out all these. And this basically is going to go just like that. Okay. So I'm going to just transfer all these numbers. So I've got my center line here. So I gotta come off the center line six and a quarter in each direction. Oh, it did not mention a speed square, but that will certainly help you make this line. All right, now it says to come out five and three quarters from the wall. And then that is four and three quarters, which means we just need to be an inch. It actually says that right here. There's all these crazy numbers. I don't know what half of them mean, but. It's one inch uh, to, the, to the back of this hole. And it's actually one inch thick, so I'll just use that. Like that. And the line on the front. Now you can see that right here is going to be my hole. All right, so now I've got to come out for this six and a half inches. Uh, from the back, and this is for the power cord. It's so weird that it's even like you do it off the center line. I got the center for the whole cabinet. All right, uh, off the center line, six and three eighths, and that's going to be the inch and a half hole. Which, like I said before, I only have inch and a quarter, so I'm going to do an inch and a quarter. And if I can't fit the cord through, I'll have to widen it with a jigsaw or something. Let's see here, we gotta come out 10 inches and seven and a half from the center. And that's going to be a 3 8 diameter hole for the mounting screws. It's also gonna be one here that's 10 inches out and 12 and a half from the center. So I'm gonna do these 3 8 holes first. I'm gonna do this big inch and a quarter hole next. Okay, so here's another tool they didn't say you needed. A multi-tool, or I don't know how else you would cut this while it's up here if the cabinet was not installed 
uh, and you had it down on the ground, you could do it with a jigsaw probably, but who's going to take the cabinets back down to do this? So you're going to need a multi-tool. And it's very simple, you just turn it on and cut that square. I forgot to mention, you're going to want hearing protection. Alright, in case you're wondering why it's smoking so bad, there's, uh, this is pre-finished plywood and it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers of plywood, which means there is one, oh, plus the veneer. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight layers of glue. So you're basically cutting through mostly glue. So these long bolts with the washers are going to come down into the top of the microwave. But for now, I'm just gonna leave them up here so they're ready to go. And the microwave is just gonna get set up in here and onto these clips. And then the wire gets pushed up through the hole, pull it up, this gets pushed in, and these get uh, screwed down to hold it in place. So it's pretty easy. One thing before we go ahead, you gotta take off these temporary little cover things. I think I need two hands to do this. There we go. So I have my lovely assistant Trisha helping me. You should always do this with two people. I'm gonna stick the wire up in there so my hole did work. And then we're gonna lift this thing up and tip it forwards and set the back on the bracket. Ooh. <laughs> Don't move my head. Okay. See the bracket? So pull it out forwards towards you. Don't hit the cabinet. Yep. And then we're gonna go up inside the cabinet. Do you fit? I'm just fitting now. Okay. Wire up. Go up higher. I think you're on there. Yep, we're good. Thanks. There we go. Hold that. Over here. Then I'll use my other tool they didn't mention. The ladder. Okay, now this is where they recommended the uh, the number three sized um, Phillips bit. Okay, so you can see the bolts up here are bolted in. The wire came right up in here, and that'll get plugged in when I'm ready. Not yet. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter. I could plug it in now, make sure it works. I don't know if this breaker's on. It's on. Yep, it's on. All right, so on the back here, you get this damper, and it slides into those two little slots there. And then on this other end, you can see that screw hole that lines up there. So we gotta get a, there's a screw that came with it. It'll get screwed into that. And that's it. That'll hold the damper in place. After this cabinet was installed, the screws don't reach anymore. So I'm gonna get some longer screws, plug that in. But let's make sure it works. Like I said, yep, there it is, timer works. And then you gotta remove all these things before we use it. So the last piece of this puzzle is to install the vent. The only problem is the piece of vent that I had left over isn't long enough. So this is very simple though. These pieces just snap together. So these pieces just snap together like that. All right, now you got a big rectangle. And one side's gonna go down over the exhaust of the microwave, like that. And then up into, in. you wanna go inside of this. So I've already got this bent out. And that'll go up. 
basically like that. And then once that's installed, I'm not really going to be able to get duct tape behind it, but I'm going to want to tape these seams up to keep as much air going up and out as possible. So I will have to do that another day. But for now, that's it. Well, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Please subscribe and ring that notification bell. And uh, hopefully it's helped somebody out. See you on the next video.